She's hot, but she's on. I think it's helping it not move. It looks like some crazy 17th century do now. It is currently the beginning of March. That means that I am flying out to America in about a month and competing as the Australian representative at C2E2 for the Cosplay Central Crown Championship. That's happening in like a month and a half. So what does that mean? Well, it means I have to get ready. And what I mean by that is I need to pull Top out of the closet, make sure she is all okay. I know there's a few things that I need to fix on her, like the magnets in her wig needs to like be kind of moved. I know her bun needs a little bit of tender loving care and her headpiece needs fixing. And I may have to remake an entire part of her outfit, but I can do that in a month. Yeah, sure, no problem. The other thing I need to do is make sure that the cosplays I'm taking with me are complete and looking good. So for example, Penelope, I need to fix up her wig because I brushed out all of her curls and now it looks crazy. So I need to reset her wig and restyle it. And I'm still trying to figure out what my third cosplay that I'm going to take with me. It could be Meryn behind me because I've literally just finished her, but we shall see. I, I need to see what's gonna fit into my luggage. Ah, there's so much to do in like a month. Oh my goodness me. All right, so we're gonna get cracking. But before I do, I want to give a special, special like shout out and thank you to obviously Read Pop because they are covering the cost of my ticket to the actual event and accommodation for some of the nights that we are in Chicago, which I'm very excited about. And also a massive shout out and thank you to the Western Australian Department of Local Governments, Sports and Cultural Industries as they are covering the cost of the flights for Terry and I to and from America. Words cannot express how happy I am that the Western Australian Government recognised cosplay as an art form and that they are supporting me on this journey as the first West Aussie to be representing Australia at this massive, major global event. It really is awesome. And what's more is that they are supportive of me, not just going over C2E2, but also to take the opportunity to collaborate with a few other cosplayers in USA and also Canada. But more on that, you know, later when I can actually spill the beans. All right, first up, it is time to do the thing that I've been putting off for ages because it's so hot in Australia at the moment. And that is, I need to put Toph on. I need to make sure that she fits. I need to make sure that everything is fine and fix what needs to be fixed. So I'm already sweating just thinking about this. I've just had a shower and I'm already sweating. I need to turn on the aircon. She's hot, but she's on. So I have put all of the fabric pieces on. I've not put on the armor because the armor, number one, it's so hot here. And frankly, the armor is fine. The, the armor is not something that needs to be adjusted. Um, I have to repin this part better. <laughs> I remember now. Um, but everything is fitting. Everything we were able to get on. So I don't need to make a new kind of uh, corset that goes the the underbus corset which is what I was thinking I was going to need to do but yeah so that's good so frankly all I need to do is fix the wig fix the headpiece and fix Penelope's wig as well and then we should be good to go I think hey less work than I anticipated she says full of confidence knowing full well that she probably still needs to fix up the prop as well because I think some of the knitting may need some reinforcement there now that I think about it. <sighs> it's a brand new day and it's time to do some prep for America. So the first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this Penelope wig that I have really worn to death. As you can see, the style has completely come undone. It looks like some crazy 17th century do now, um, or rather 18th century. <laughs> Uh, and what I need to do is I need to give it a good brush out 
try and get it as unmatted as possible because in some sections it's real knotted up uh, and then I need to reset it and I need to reset it as her season two style which has a lot of very defined ringlets at the back so this I'm going to take with me to America and Canada for my Penelope cosplay which is one of my supporting cosplays that I'm going to be wearing C2E2. I'm going to either wear it on the Friday or the Sunday. And I'm also doing a photo shoot with Doll Damage in Canada, which I'm very excited for. So that's what I'm going to work on first today. I'm going to take her off and she's going to go onto my wig head, which is right here, and I'm going to give her a good brush. Also, to give you a bit of an update, I did sew the hook and eyes onto the bodice and the corset for Toph yesterday. Didn't film it because it was really straightforward and I just was like not feeling up to filming. So that is done. So I need to do this wig first and then I'll get onto Toph's wig. I'm kind of like putting off Toph's wig and the headpiece because it's just gonna be really fiddly and I want all my like faculties while I'm doing that I'm getting over a bit of a cold at the moment this is what I'm working with I've just taken out all of the bobby pins that I could find in that wig and this is her current condition she needs a lot of love so let's get combing it's been about an hour and this is where I'm up to so I have combed out the entire wig uh, but what I'm doing is because the bottom is so frizzy, I'm going through and I'm just doing a flat iron straightener just through the bottom just to kind of get it a little bit more uh, under control. And then what I'm going to go through and do is grab the curlers and actually set them in curlers and then boil the wig again. I'm kind of figuring out what to do up here because I kind of like how that's looking now. Um, you know, obviously I need to pin it in a way that covers the actual cap, but I quite like that. I just kind of want to fix the bottoms, but yeah, it looks proper dead, but once I've got the curls in it, it should be all right. The lovely wig has now been put into curlers. Somehow I ran out of curlers, <laughs> so I've had to put in three small ones in the back of the crown area. But they're going to be swept up into the curls kind of pinned anyway so it's all good so i've got big curls at the back and then i've got medium curls all on the front i've tried to leave a little bit of space um just to keep it flat ish over the top i re-watched my video and that's what part of the reason why i make videos for youtube because when you have to go back and fix something You've got a record of what you did last time. So, yay. I kind of learnt from my mistake, hopefully. <laughs> All right, let's get these sorted. The wig has been boiled. So now I just need to let it kind of soak into the towel before I take it and kind of sit it up and let it dry overnight or for like two days. But I can start working on Toph again. Let's do that. So I lied, I didn't work on Toph's wig at all, but Penelope's wig is now dry, so I'm gonna take her all out and restyle her. I'll see you when I've done that. So Penelope's wig is restyled. I might just try and recurl these again and just let them sit for longer. Um, but there we are, crazy left side, sort of smooth on the right. It's a bit of a like, comb over to here and I've got the little flower barrette thing there and I've got the big curls in the back. It's not my best wig. It's not my best wig but you know what? It is what it is and uh, it looks fine with the costume I think. So you know what? We're just gonna move forward and call it what it is. I hate wigs. I still hate this wig. So I decided to just try it all on, make sure it all fit because I've not put this on for about a year, a year and a half. And yes, she still fits. She is very cute. I forgot how cute she is. Can't lift up my arms. I remember when I made the sleeves, I did not put enough poof into them. Uh, but that's okay. We're a lady. We, we, don't, we don't lift up our arms. Yes, I'm letting myself be distracted yet again. I know, I know. It's just, I'm so nervous to get back onto top. I think because I spent like five months working on her, the idea of just like 
reworking on her just brings back like how much work I put into her. <laughs> but yes, here is Penelope. So I think this is going to be my Sunday outfit for C2E2. I think I'm going to do Marin on Friday and then I will do Toff obviously on Saturday for the competition. So yes, I've got my gloves as well. Penelope is not complete without her gloves but I do have the gloves here so yep all the pieces are together I can take her yay and she fits down very very small so good for packing good morning so it's time that I do some work on Toff because I keep on putting her off and I really just want to like get her fixed up by the end of this week because we leave next week and I don't want to be stressing over this next week I just want to get it fixed so the first thing I'm going to do is the headdress and I've just pulled it out from the wrapper and there's a few things that I need to kind of fix let me show you here is the headdress and it's actually not too bad but this wing is coming off so I need to re-glue this wing very very securely um, but everything else seems to have held really nicely. All of the beads seem to be still glued on. The crown is not going anywhere and the other wing is pretty good. I might reinforce that again with some more glue. But yeah, this, this happened when um, I kind of was very excited and hugged my friend Asham um, after I won uh, the Australian round and I just heard it go and I was like oh there goes the wing so I'm glad I didn't lose it completely because um, I would really hate to have to remake it so I need to fix that now that shouldn't take too long which frankly I'm very happy about it because I Putting this all together was one of the most stressful parts of doing this cosplay because I had one shot to get it right because like these are individually printed and you know sealed and primed and painted and then detailed and then like all of these beads were hand beaded with a gradient effect so there's three different types of green beads in each of these and so if they broke and went everywhere, I have a backup, but it just would have been very, very tricky to get it to all work. So, mm-hmm, all right then. All right, let's fix this up. All right, so it's wig time. I have uh, moved the magnets back in the wig and they're roughly where the headband is now sitting, which is the right location for it. I think it's helping it not move, like I can look down and it's not moving so I think the magnets are helping it's really hard to tell because they are so far back and there is a lot of hair there um, but yes so with the magnets now glued in place don't worry I did it last night so it does mean that it's fully cured I can go ahead and start kind of helping restyle this wig slightly so you can see like there's bits of hair that have fallen out um, basically it needs to be reclipped I've also put a net over the bun and I think I'm going to keep the net over the bun but I need to fix what's underneath at first and then just repin the net over the bun and I think that that might help smooth everything over. The net, because it's black, um, it actually hides quite well into the bun and I think that that's going to be the nicest way for it to keep its shape and I might even just go into judging with that net over the top because it's very, very minimal. You can't really see and it just helps smooth everything over. So. I think I might actually do that. Anyway, I need to kind of resell this and then we'll see how everything's looking. So we're getting there. I leave in like three days. Yay! So this is the wig in its current form. And as you can see, it needs a little bit of love. So the first thing I need to do is I just need to fix up this bun section that has fallen down uh, and I remember when that fell down it fell down just after pre-judging so I need to put that back in place and smooth it across. Once I do that I can put a hair knit over the bun because the rest of it's looking pretty good which I'm very very happy about and with the net over the top of it it will just protect it whilst I work on the front. 
So the front is a different story. So, or rather should I say top, because the front is actually not too bad. That's holding up pretty nicely there. But this kind of top has had a fair amount of kind of uh, friction happening on it because of the headband. Uh, me taking that on and off and like just a bit of wear and tear and what was once smooth is no longer smooth. And of course, how I made this, I can't just take off the bun and re-smooth it over because it's all like stitched into place and glued into place. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to figure out how to smooth this all down here um, and essentially probably pin it into position. I know that this is going to get jostled around as well whilst we're in the plane um, and just travel in general. So I know that I'll probably need to redo this step once I get to Chicago, but wigs have never been my strong point. So I'm just going to try and make it as neat as absolutely possible now um, while I've got it at home and I've got all of my tools uh, and then uh, just do some minor fixes hopefully in Chicago but yes that's what we need to work on now so I'll catch up with you once I've at least done the button there you are so the wig has been fixed in the bun section so as you can see this bottom bit is no longer flopping down and off and how I've done that is I've just done two little stitches quite high up on the side in obviously black uh, strong thread um, and I've just put a stitch on each side just to ensure that it's pulled up and it's taut again because that was what the issue was somehow this bottom section had become looser than what it was when I first laid it out and it was holding fine <laughs> I swear it was holding fine but just because I was wearing it and it loosened a bit uh, this bottom section came down because obviously gravity and like this is like the main kind of width of the circle and this was under it of course gravity was going to pull it down so I've now secured this section in with a stitch and it's hidden on the sides you can't really see it so happy days so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a net over the top and then we can start on the um the front section so this is the net in question it's just one of those ones that you get over normal wigs I've taken one that's black and I'm just going to put it over and there you go. So now it's fully protected or at least more protected than what it was. And as you can see, it actually blends in quite nicely with the wig. So I may even essentially pin this into the wig and leave it there. So that way I've got a nice round circle and it looks really nice. Um, and I certainly will be wearing this on stage like this, I think. So yeah. It's funny, sometimes the easy solutions are the best ones, right? <laughs> All right, let's work on the front of this. And I'm gonna do that off camera because there may be some swear words. Ta-da! So the front of the wig has now been restyled or rather just kind of smoothed over. So what I ended up doing was I took my fine tooth comb and was just pulling sections of it back at a time um, and gathering the loose um, amount of hair underneath the cat the the netting that I've used for the bun and so I've kind of like created like this line of excess hair uh, and then I've used u-shaped clips to put them in place I wish my u-shaped um, clips were our pins were actually black rather than brass but you know what it's okay like it's not really noticeable especially as soon as you get from about here you can't really notice it and I'm gonna have the crown on top of it anyway. So yeah, I think that's the wig now restyled. So the last thing I need to check over will be the rock prop. And I think there's a few little bits that I need to fix up on that. Da, the rock prop in all of its glory when it doesn't have the acrylic rods in it. As you can see, it's it, it gets quite compressed. But this is what we're focusing on at the moment. So this is where the acrylic rods are inserted. And as you can see, I was in a bit of a hurry to take the acrylic rods out after uh, PAX in October because I had a plane to catch. And so I tried very carefully and I spent about half an hour unpicking all of these little stitches that I had made so that the rods wouldn't fall out. And I need to take all the excess thread out 
but I also need to check because in a few places like here you can see I've actually torn um, so yeah so just like here I've like torn the 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 chill so I need to and there's another one so I need to go back and reinforce that because the last thing that I want to do is have the chill break on me when I'm on stage or in pre-judging. So I need to just make sure that that's okay and reinforced and everything's fine going into the waistband. Uh, and then I can pack her away and then Toph is ready to go to Chicago. Ta-da! So now this is so much cleaner. All the little holes have been repaired and it's all very sturdy. So I'm really happy with that. And looks like I can pack her all away. There we go. So Toff is now all ready to go to be packed away and go to Chicago so she can compete in the C2E2 Crown Championships, Cosplay Central Crown Championships. I am so excited to be the Australian representative this year. Uh, this is a little bit like a dream come true. Like it's something I never thought I'd be able to say that I would be doing given that it's purely a craftsmanship competition. Uh, but here we go, it's gonna be fun. So by the time that you're watching this, Terry and I will be in America and it will be very close to C2E2. So please make sure that you tune into the live stream if you are not at C2E2 yourself. If you are at C2E2 yourself, please come and cheer loudly because I don't know anyone. <laughs> and if you're on the live stream, can you just like give me a cheer through the internet because like I feel like I might need that as well. If you follow me over on Instagram, as soon as I know what the live stream link is going to be, I'm going to be posting it on my Instagram and all of that good stuff. I've got so much that I'm doing at C2E2 on the Friday and the said day. So I'm doing two panels and a meet and greet on Friday. And then Saturday is all about the competition. Someday I'm going to enjoy myself and like relax. But getting back to this video, I hope that it has shown you what it's like to work on a cosplay for a very long time, compete in it, and then having to wear it again, what sometimes is involved to make sure that uh, it is still in a good enough position to be put in front, front of judges. Uh, it, it's, it's been really interesting for me to come back to this cosplay, um, you know, quite a number of months later and looking over it again. I just hope that the judges like it and that the audience likes it. But at the end of the day, I'm just gonna go and have some fun. Anyway guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. The next video that's going to be released is actually going to be all about traveling with cosplay. So please make sure you subscribe and you've got the little bell notification on so that you don't miss that one if you're interested. All right, thanks so much for watching. Bye.